Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham, and today we're going to talk about style inheritance in WPF. I'll start with a very simple example here. We've got a stack panel with one text block on our form, and the text simply says, hello world. I want to create a style for this text block and apply a new font size and a new font weight to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the style attribute on the text block and point it at a static resource, and we're going to call this base style. Now we haven't created the base style yet, which is why we're getting this blue underline in Visual Studio and it's telling us that the base style could not be resolved. That means that Visual Studio can't find a style with a key called base style anywhere, so we need to create that. So we'll create a resources section for our window where we'll store all of our styles. Now we'll create the style object and give it a key that matches the key we specified below. So that needs to be base style. And now once we've created this base style, you can see that the blue underline goes away and Visual Studio can resolve the style properly. Now we want to apply a couple setters inside our style to change the visual look of our text block. So the first I'm going to change is, is I'm going to set the uh, font size. And you'll notice that when I'm typing here, I'm not actually getting IntelliSense like you would expect. And the reason that I'm not is I haven't told the style object what our target type is. So let's go ahead and do that first so that our IntelliSense experience will be a little bit better here. So what I want to do is I want to say the target type is equal to the text block. And that means that this style will only ever be applied to text blocks. And so now the setters and the IntelliSense can figure out what properties are available just to text blocks. So now when I bring the IntelliSense back up and I start typing, now you can see I'm getting IntelliSense as I would expect. And so I can get font size and I can set its value to say 25. And I can have a second setter here, and I can set the font weight, for instance, and I can set it to, say, bold. Oops. Now that I've done that, I've created a style and given it a key called base style. And now I've created a text block, and I've applied that style to it. So when I run the application, what you'll see is that I get font size 25 and bold applied to my text block. Now if I have another text block on the form and I say I want this style to be slightly different but I want to make sure that I inherit all of the properties of the base style. I'm going to point this at a new style. I'm going to call this child style. And then I'm going to set some text. And I'm going to say hello again. So now we've got a second text block and we're pointing it towards a resource called child style. And you can see we get our blue underline again because we haven't created a style with this key yet. So we'll go up into our resources section. I'm going to create a new style object. And I'm going to give it a key. And I'm going to call it child style. And again, I'm going to specify a target type of text block so that we get this IntelliSense behavior we want. And what I'm going to do in this style is I'm going to set the foreground property. And I'm going to set that to green. Now, if we run this as is, there's no link between the base style and the child style right now. So we have two separate styles with two separate keys and they're applied explicitly to two separate elements. So when I run this application now, what you'll see is that the first style gets the font size and font weight property set, and the second one doesn't get either of those set. It only gets the foreground set to green. And that's because I haven't set up that inheritance link between my two styles. So if I now want my child style to inherit the font size and font weight properties of the base, and then also apply the foreground setter, what I need to do is add an element to the style called based on, and when I use based on, I use a static resource markup extension, and I point it towards the key of the style that we want to base this one on. So when I say based on base style, which is our key up here, now I'm saying that this child style will inherit any setters from the base and provide any additional setters in its own style, for instance, setting the foreground to green. Now when I run this, what you'll see is that my second text block now is getting the, the bold and the font size settings from the base and then adding the foreground to green. And in our inherited style, we can also have the inherited style take precedence. So if we, in the inherited style, were to set a property that is already set in the base, for instance, the font size, if we change that down to 15, this inherited style now is overriding any setters from the base. So we're still going to get the font weight bold applied but our font size is going to be changed by the child style here. And you can see we still have a bold applied and we're getting our green foreground and we're overriding the base styles font size setting in the inherited style. 
So the key to style inheritance in WPF is using the based on attribute on your style element. And inside the based on attribute value, you use a resource markup extension, a static or dynamic resource markup extension to point to the style that you want to inherit your properties from. And this inheritance level can go down again. So I can create a third style here and I can call this grandchild style. And I can base this on the child style, which is itself based on the base style. So now I've created two levels of inheritance, set the same target type for text block. And now let's set a new setter and we'll set the background on this one and we'll set it to, uh, let's say yellow. So now I've created three levels of inheritance. I've got a base style that my child style is based on. And then the grandchild style is based on the child style, which is itself based on the base style. So with those three levels of inheritance, now I can create a third text block. And let's actually name these so it's a little more obvious which one's which. So I'll call this grandchild, I'll call this child, and I'll call this base. And now we use, in this one we say grandchild style. And now we'll go ahead and run this. And what you can see is the base style has got our font size and font weight. The child style has the foreground and, and the overridden font size. And the grandchild style has the foreground and overridden font size from the child and then also added its own background style. There's one more trick to style inheritance in WPF. Most people actually don't know this one. Uh, so we've been dealing with explicit styles here, which means we've given a key to these styles. You can also, in WPF, you can create what's known as an implicit style. And that means you create a style and you specify only a target type and you don't specify a key. And what we'll set here, we're gonna set the font family and we'll set it equal to, um, let's say, Arial. So we wanna say all the text blocks anywhere in our application will always use the Arial font family. Now, what happens here if I add a text block and I, and I don't specify a style, I just specify a text and we'll say no explicit style. And we go ahead and run this. Well, what you'll see happen is the font family of the first one is Arial while the other three are not inheriting that. So by default, any implicit styles are not inherited by the explicit style in your, in your application. Often you want this to be the case. You want to set an implicit style as the base and then have all your named styles inherit from that. And again, we have this inheritance chain already. So all we need to do is modify the base style here and all the rest of them will pick it up. So the base style now should be based on, remember we still have to use a static resource, but the trick here to using to specifying the implicit style is to actually use the X type markup extension and we'll point it at the type text block. And this is actually the generated name for an implicit style, which is why this works. So now what I'm saying is my base style is gonna be based on any implicit style that's specified. And let's move this up to make this a little more obvious. So I have an implicit style applied to all text blocks and then I start my inheritance chain of named styles. And I start with the base style being based on that implicit style above. And now when I run this, what you'll see is that all of the fonts in my class now are using that Arial style. And let's actually make that a little more obvious by changing that font to something that you can see. So Windings, for instance, is gonna be symbols. So now you can see that all of them are based on that implicit style, and then we've got the inheritance chain that continues the overriding. So the key, again, to inheriting styles in WPF is to use the based on attribute in your style. And one handy trick for any implicit styles you specify, you can say based on using static resource and then use the X type markup extension to point towards the implicit style that you'd like to base your, your named styles on. And that's it for style inheritance in WPF.